Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to episode 4 of Collecting 101, and today we're going to delve into Pyrex. Now I'd like to talk about the history of Pyrex, the uh, popular patterns out there, and the value of the Pyrex pieces you could be looking for or already have in your collection. So let's get started today with history. Alright, so let's go all the way back to the year 1893, when German scientist Otto Schott discovered that adding boron oxide to glass was a great way to reinforce the glass, while also increasing its resistance to thermal shock. So he used that information to start producing a product called Duran in Germany at that time. Now, it wasn't until 1908 that Eugene Sullivan of the Corning Glass Company, who did most of his college studying on what Schott did in Germany, um, started infusing his glass with boron oxide and produced a product called Nonex. Now, he did that to be used in um, the railroad signaling lanterns as well as battery jars. Now, a worker from Corning actually sawed a battery jar in half and brought it home to his wife um, because his wife was having such a hard time finding a baking dish that would be able to be used more than once or twice without breaking. So she brought it home and used this half a battery jar and baked a cake in it. Now, she baked a cake in it and it turned out phenomenal. So she started testing a whole bunch of different foods in it to see what this product could do. She found out that it was resistant to temperature change. There was no discoloration. Um, the food didn't change tastes being used in here. Um, and it also um, didn't offer any bad smells on the product once it was done. And you could watch the item cook because it was clear glass. So you know if it was underbaked, overbaked, or that perfect golden crispy brown that we all love. So she took all the information, sent it off to Corning, and Corning found out real quick that, hey, we might have something on our hands here. So by 1915, right at the beginning of World War I, they started, uh, they uh, introduced this product we know today as Pyrex, pretty much as a counterpunch to what German's product, Durant, or Germany's product called Duran was doing at the time. Now, it was a huge success in the States. All the way into the 1930s, where in 1936, they actually partnered with a glass company out of Pennsylvania to produce that colorful um, opal glass we're talking about, you know, we want to talk about today. Because it offered the same um, features as the clear glass, but in a more eye appealing, you know, eye appealing look to it. So, again, um, this product was actually used in military mess halls all the way up until 1945 before it even hit homes. And once it hit the homestead, it was a huge success. All the way into the 1980s when the actual, the colorful opal glass were, was actually discontinued and they went back to just the clear glass. Now they went back to the clear glass and, you know, don't think that Pyrex is, you know, doing bad because they're still alive and well today. Uh, they have great products, high quality products. I mean, that is the best baking dishes you can get today are Pyrex dishes. So, um, so yeah, it was a great product when it started for its durability and all of the things that could withstand in a baking. It could go from a freezer to an oven and be just fine. So, so yeah, Pyrex, an amazing amount of history. So let's go on today to popularity. And we're going to talk about the popular patterns. So when I talk about popularity of Pyrex, I really want to delve into the patterns. Now, Pyrex produced 150 different patterns, so I can't touch base on all of them, but I definitely want to highlight a few. So, but first, I got to start talking about standard patterns and promotional patterns. Now, standard patterns are ones that were released for over two years. Promotional patterns were only released on a limited amount of time with a limited amount of pieces. So they're definitely rarer and harder to come by. So we're going to start it off with some standard patterns back with the first one in 1945 with the primary color nesting bowls. Now these are very popular due to their easily, because they were easily storable, but as well as they offered a great color accent in your kitchen. Now in 1956 they came out with the pink daisy, which was originally called the white daisy, but as you guys will see uh, throughout the years Pyrex had issues um, confusing different patterns with one another. So it started as a white daisy, turned into the pink daisy to avoid confusion later on. Now, in 1956, they also came out with the snowflake pattern, which was uh, originally out in a turquoise, which is Pyrex's, or Pyrex is one of their most popular colors. Uh, but it's also available in a black, which, again, is harder to come by, but, again, making it more collectible. Now, in 1957, they came out with the butterprint, which is the Amish farmer and his wife, um, again, which is a very popular piece to collect, but it also comes in a yellow and a pink, which is even harder to come by. So, again, ones you definitely want to be looking for. Now, in 1962, they came out with the Early American, which I consider, you know, one of the more plainer uh, patterns. But again, it was one of Pyrex's more longer running patterns. It was actually one of the most popular decorating themes of that decade. Um, and then in 1968, they came out with the Daisy pattern because flower power, you know, was so popular in the 60s. So uh, Pyrex knew that and they came out with this pattern and it turned out to be a really big success. 
Now, in 1971, they came out with the friendship pattern, which, again, it was very uh, definitely signified the times, you know, holding hands, peace and love, you know, working together, friendship, you know. I mean, it was amazing. And, again, one of the most popular, you know, patterns they had. Um, and then in 1972, they came out with the garland pattern. Now, the garland pattern was originally called the snowflake blue. But again, it goes back to what I was talking about before when they didn't want to confuse patterns because the original 1956 snowflake pattern, you know, would very confusing to the snowflake blue pattern. So collectors started calling it the garland, you know, avoid that confusion. Also in 1972, they came out with the butterfly gold pattern. Now, this is significant because they started um, coming out with other compatible pieces with that as well. So you can get the casserole dish, the salt and pepper shakers, the butter dish. So you could have all this, you know, um, you know, so your kitchen could have this like nice great theme to it. All the different pieces could have the same pattern. Now, also in 1972, they came out with the spring blossom green. Now, I consider this, again, kind of like with the early American, one of the more, you know, plainer patterns. But again, it was one of the most longer running patterns in, you know, Pyrex history. Now, also in 19, or 1980, they came out with the um, Autumn Harvest, which again, I say this is uh, very collectible because that's one of the other patterns I get asked about a lot in our shop. So I definitely wanted to include it on the list because it's one of the more collectible patterns just based off of my experience. Now, in 1983, they came out with the Colonial Mist. Now, this is significant because it was actually the last uh, pattern that Pyrex produced. So definitely one that people go after because, again, the last one ever produced, no more after that. So, so yeah, that was just a highlight of some of the standard patterns that I really like and I think that are very collectible, you know, amongst Pyrex collectors. Now, I want to touch base on a few of the promotional patterns. So I'm going to kind of say the name and kind of give it a second so I can show you guys some pictures of them too. So we're going to start off with the hot air balloon. Again, really cool piece. Uh, we also have the ivy. And then we have the barbed wire, the dandelion the bluebird, the eyes, and the starburst. Now these are only just a few ones I picked out of the of the promotional patterns that are out there. There's so many more out there. If you guys are gonna definitely start getting into collecting Pyrex, look up um, all the patterns so you guys could have, you know, which ones you like and kinda, kinda base it off of that because there's so many cool ones out there. But I definitely wanna show you some of the promotional ones that have this different side of look to them that were uh, made it so much more collectible. So definitely ones you definitely wanna be looking out for. So, all right, let's get on to value. All right, guys, so when we talk about value in, in, your, in your Pyrex, I want to start talking about condition. Now, obviously, your Pyrex pieces need to be crack-free, chip-free, and no discoloration. And also, next, you want to start doing some studying on the standard patterns and the promotional patterns. Because do you want to start collecting all the Pyrex, or do you want to just start collecting specific patterns? Because certain patterns are going to have different sizes, different colors, and different pieces you're going to be looking for. So the more research and knowledge that you have, the better off you're going to be. Now, after that, you to achieve your highest value on your Pyrex, you definitely want to have the complete set. So if the set comes with three different size bowls, you want to have all three sets of those bowls. Not only for the value down the line, but just it makes your collection look better. Now, when you're, if you want to get into promotional pieces, like I talked about before, they're definitely rarer, harder to come by. So you might be paying a little more money for them, but down the line, they're probably going to be worth more money as well. So, I mean, that, that's something definitely to consider if you want to get into the promotional pieces. But your standard pieces, too, like I was talking about, you know, when I was talking about the popularity, the gooseberry, the autumn harvest are just two of the ones I talked about that we get asked about all the time. And we've sold pieces like those for $40, $50, 60 $70 in the store, depending on size, condition, and color, you know. So those are those standard pieces are not nothing to shake, you know, shake your fist at. There's definitely some money out there as well in those, too. So... Definitely something I want you guys to be out there looking for. Um, and then when we come down to prices, guys, like there's so many different sizes, colors, pieces. That I don't really, I can't really sit here and give you, you know, one price that's gonna, you know, cover everything. So my suggestion is to hop on eBay and go to sold listings. Now, when you go to sold listings, um, it's easy to do. Just search for your item, go to the filter button. Hit and then go all the way down to see more, and then it should say sold listings. Click on that, and it's going to give you a, a better idea of what your stuff's selling for, which is pretty much at the end of the day the value for it. So it gives you something if you do already have a Pyrex piece, it's going to help you find out what it's worth. Or if you're looking to get into them and you want to know how much to pay for something, that's a good you know a good barometer of what you should be paying for it as well. So. So yeah, guys, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today with Pyrex. I mean, I could have delved into a lot more of the patterns, but again, you know, I don't want to keep these videos so long. I wanted to compress it down. So 
Hopefully you guys got a lot of information today and hopefully, you know, I got you gave you guys a little more info and wanting to get into collecting Pyrex because I was telling Amber, if I was to start collecting one more thing, it might be Pyrex because there's so many cool pieces out there and the hunt would be the funnest part because there's so many different colors, you know, just something, be something fun to do. So maybe something I'll consider down the line. I'll keep you guys up to date. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you guys want to give this video a thumbs up, comment below. Are you guys Pyrex collectors? Did I intrigue you to maybe start collecting Pyrex? Um, and if you guys already, you know, if you guys already collecting Pyrex, what do you collect or what do you have? I mean, let's kind of see what's out there. I mean, there's some really cool pieces out there. I hope, you know, maybe you guys have, that'd be awesome to talk about. So if you guys get some time, subscribe to the channel. We got some lot of, we got a lot of more great content coming out. We got an unboxing video coming up next week. We have one of our awesome fans that sent us in a couple boxes of um, antiques she wants us to open up and kind of go through. So that's going to be a really fun video we got coming out next week. And then episode five of Collecting 101 next week is going to be Roseville Pottery, a highly requested video that we're going to touch base on next week. So be ready for the Roseville Pottery. And like I said, when we always talk about collecting, guys, we always talk about memories over money. So I'll see you guys later.